Sonic, the heart of your system. I'm Leo Water for Kit Guru. This is Leo Says, my occasional opinion piece, apparently number 24 of them, would you believe? I'm fresh back from a week's holiday and I look exactly the same colour I went away because I was sheltering from mosquitoes in a hot country. Great time, nice place, but the bugs really got to me, quite literally. And looking down the news, we have NVIDIA, a Greek chap, Intel, and AMD and Apple. So it's the same names yet again. We do, however, have some updates to various rumors been sloshing around for some while now. Uh, graphics, let's start with NVIDIA. GTX 1180, apparently it is going to be 1180 rather than 2080. This is the rumor, is now expected 30th of August, followed by GTX 1170, 30th September, followed by GTX 1160, 30th of October. So those are rumors, but they're very specific rumors. Initially, we expect NVIDIA to launch uh, what they're presumably still going to term to be Founders Edition cards, or as we'd call them, reference designs. And then a month after each of those launches, we're going to see add-in board partner uh, cards from the likes of Asus MSI and all the rest of them, EVGA and whoever else. And it seems that Turing is going to use the same fabrication process as the existing 10 series GPUs. Uh, my guess is that the addition is going to be uh, ray tracing because that's what NVIDIA has been talking about recently, which in turn means that games are going to start using ray tracing in the engines. And of course, the uh, suggestion there is that NVIDIA thinks they have an advantage to bring to the party. If they can get the games developers to use ray tracing, that's going to give them the edge over AMD, who presumably won't have that facility. And therefore, NVIDIA will continue to win and all is rosy in the garden. Uh, it also suggests that Turing is going to be lacking the uh, tensor cores that we saw in the uh, big Volta card. Uh, so Volta minus tensor equals Turing would be the formula as we're being all scientific with this stuff. This is all rumours, absolute rumours. Nothing officially has come out of NVIDIA. But as we get closer to launch, the rumours appear to be firming up. Personally, my interest, my biggest interest here is, apart from availability, is going to be pricing. Uh, NVIDIA has worked very hard to not ditch all the 10 series GPUs that they appear to have in oversupply. They're clearly there. Well, I assume they're going to try and maintain pricing. Uh, if the GTX 1180 launches at £499, £599, I mean, that'd be like a bit ouchy, but that'd be back to where we used to be. If it's the new normal of 750 painful, really painful. Uh, and also it sounds like it's going to be a big GPU. That's the thing there. And big GPUs are expensive GPUs. As to memory and such like, uh, I guess we're going for next gen uh, GDDR rather than uh, HBM2. Uh, but again, lots of things up in the air. So there's going to be plenty of interesting information coming out in a month yeah a month uh, but uh, we're gonna have to keep be patient for another four weeks I am interested I am keen this has been a very long time coming this is uh, gonna help us move forward uh, with gaming PCs because CPUs have made huge advances in the last year and two uh, and GPUs have been stagnant moving on some kick guru news <laughs> and here's where I try and pronounce a Greek name Aris Mitsiopoulos I'm going to go for. Uh, I've met Aris a number of times. I've never actually, I know he's called Aris. Uh, his surname I've seen written down. I've never tried pronouncing it out loud, so I've probably just butchered it. So I can only apologise. Anyway, Aris is joining the Kit Guru team. Aris has been reviewing power supplies for some years uh, and is world class. Uh, by most people's standards, he's the best power supply reviewer in the world. Uh, for gaming PCs and such like, which is a fairly high bar. Uh, Aris is joining Kit Guru. This is really good. Power supplies are a significant part of what Kit Guru does. Uh, and I really cannot wait to see Aris uh, on board. It, it's really good news. Uh, so that's um, tomorrow. Tomorrow he starts with Kit Guru. So hurrah, welcome aboard, Aris. Good to see you. Uh, then we move on to Intel. Uh, and this is just becoming bizarre. Uh, Intel has stated in a recent financial call that it's going to launch 10 nanometer, uh, its 10 nanometer process, which is now delayed by 18 months to two years, depending on which metric you're using. And systems will arrive on sale during holiday 2019. Now that's some American thing, holiday 2019. I don't know what that means. Uh, it's been taken to mean like the summer holidays 
which means that actual hardware available October 2019. And the thing there is, most of us sort of regard um, in Europe, uh, new products arriving uh, in September, ready for launch in October, uh, and then on sale for Christmas, which is sort of uh, the same dates just from the other point of view. So on sale holiday 2019 has been taken to mean on sale and available October 2019. And here we are at the end of July 2018 just absolutely remarkable it has to be said intel's just done some financials and they were very good record profits huge amounts of money blah 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 uh, so you might argue well if they don't uh, need a new process to move forward why would they need but clearly they need to move forward that's just an obvious fact uh, so they're making money at the moment how much longer they're going to continue making outrageous amounts of money remains to be seen but 10 nanometer is still a long way off but this is their statement i mean holiday 2019 try pinning them down saying but you said it's like and what's holiday 2019 sometime in 2019 so october 2019 is currently the best bet that we've got um balanced against that there are really solid uh, more than rumors this because we actually have product codes and such like but again this is leaked Intel allegedly 9th gen desktop processors, specifically Core i9 9900K, Core i7 9700K, Core i5 9600K. The model number sound familiar. Uh, this is Coffee Lake Refresh rather than something new. There's various model codes and development names rather, such as Whiskey Lake have been doing the rounds. But this would appear to be Coffee Lake Refresh, i.e. the same 14 nanometer plus 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 three pluses uh that's I, I sometimes i've said 40 nanometer plus, 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 plus just out of stupidity but this is apparently officially going to be 40 nanometer plus 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 so tick tock or whatever um and the thing here is the i9 9900k is supposed to have eight cores 16 threads maximum boost of five gigahertz on two cores base speed 3.6 gigahertz in other words it's going head to head with ryzen 7 uh, but with a higher boost a significantly higher boost uh, which is impressive now if intel can maintain its ipc it's going to kick ryzen 7 all around the park how much it will cost what the yields will be that uh, that's a different question because this would presumably be a monolithic cpu rather than two dies put together or glued together if you're using intel speak and you have to think this would be a soldered heat spreader if that's got a dab of tim under there i cannot begin to imagine what the heat's going to be like because uh, those sorts of clock speeds um whatever the power draw is going to be based on what we've already seen i mean are we talking 200 watts i mean it's going to be a lot of juice uh at least 160 watts it just has to be 160 watts and that's before you start overclocking so uh, if the package doesn't have solder i do not see how it's going to work correctly so that would be the i9 9900k that's allied to the z390 chipset i've discussed z390 before z390 was supposed to be a new chipset with new features on a different process to z370 apparently not so because of the whole 10 nanometer going completely off the rails therefore intel doesn't have a process available to make more 40 nanometer parts so apparently the new z390 is actually a z370 with a different name scratched into it to support the processor which obviously means we get a whole bunch of new motherboards and this is ninth gen so that's very exciting uh moving down from core i9 9900k we have core i7 9700k now we're familiar with 77 6700k 7700k 8700k skylake cable lake coffee lake we know about these uh they're always are they not uh, well there were four core and six core with hyper threading apparently the i7 9700k eight cores no hyper threading which is a really big move uh, for uh, Intel. That would be the equivalent of a, a Ryzen 5. Um, interesting take on things. And the rumors suggest that that would be a package without TIM. Uh, clock speeds a tad lower than 9900K. So uh, two cores boosting to say 4.8 gigahertz, but in a sense, the detail. And then we have the i5 9600K, six threads, no hyper threading again quite a change i mean intel's been so big with hyper threading but this would seem to be pure cores doing pure work and again that you'd think would be a tim um so if these rumors are correct b 
big news, big change in the way Intel does stuff. Uh, the fact they can apparently do this stuck at 14 nanometer plus 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 is impressive. It also says, does it not, that all this Skylake, Cable Egg and all the rest of it, when they moved reluctantly from four cores to six cores to eight cores, but, you know, way back, well, when did they add hyperthreading? A long time ago. Uh, but back when Intel added hyperthreading rather than going up on the hardware cores, and we've been, you know, we're stuck at four cores for so blooming long, that would seem to be a deliberate policy. You know, you desktop people, four cores, consider yourself lucky. And now here we go. So a uh, significant change in direction for Intel. Uh, clearly, this puts them head to head in so many sectors with Ryzen 5 and Ryzen 7, which will be very interesting to see. I expect the i9-9900K to be the king of desktop gaming, without a shadow of a doubt, assuming the pricing is sensible. It also makes me wonder what's going on, um, because that part would seem to replace Skylake X for desktop users. I mean, forget people who want, you know, 18 cores, they want the Mac. If you want the Max, you go, for, well, mind you, if you want the Max, you go for Threadripper. If you want the Max Intel, then at the moment, Skylake X is where it's at. Uh, we've got the promise of the 28 core, which may or may not be Cascade Lake X, uh, which, as things stand, just seems like fantasy. I mean, just absolute nonsense. But Skylake X, X299 has just kind of dropped off the radar. If i9 9900K can come along and sort of take over in the mainstream at a significantly lower pricing, that would be very interesting. It would also, in a way, kind of give up that uh, high ground to uh, AMD, which would be curious to say the least. Anyway, looking forward to seeing that. Uh, obviously, the devil, as always, is in the detail, assuming any of this is true, but those rumours seem really solid. Some products that are frankly of passing interest to us, except for one fascinating number, Cooper Lake AP, Cooper Lake SP, and there are other code names around of Copper Lake, but these are Cooper Lake with two O's, will apparently support Barlow Pass DIMMs, which will apparently be next gen Optane 3D Crosspoint. Now, Intel and Micron seem to have had a parting of the ways on this. Micron just appears to have given up on the technology altogether. Intel, as ever, is persisting because that's what they do. I mean, how long do they persist with Itanium? Are they still persisting with Itanium? You know, they come up with a thing, they determine it has a niche, and they will keep on going with it. Uh, but 3D Crosspoint and Next Gen Optane DIMMs, so not caching, this is actual light memory modules, and it sits in the hierarchy, presumably between the DIMMs and um, SSD. Uh, I, I don't think this will replace regular DIMMs, uh, DDR4, uh, but, you know, who knows. Uh, so a hierarchy of storage, and we're talking here dual uh, sort of two two cores within uh, two two um, dies within the CPU. We're talking monster silicon, apparently rated at three hundred and fifty watts, which is simply monumental. Clearly requires liquid cooling. No argument about that. Um, maybe even phase change cooling. But it also suggests that when you move back to the idea about twenty eight cores on the desktop and such like, the idea it might be rated at four hundred, five hundred watts or whatever. Pick some monstrous outrageous number provided you put enough cooling on it it's doable the idea that intel has actual genuine parts at 350 watts i just find fascinating uh, but nothing to do with my world whatsoever amd amd has just announced its best financial quarter for seven years and has made a profit well done amd genuinely well done i mean it's about blooming time uh, Ryzen is selling well. Judging by our analysis of the figures, and when I say analysis, I mean a brief conversation, it suggests that uh, consoles, because obviously AMD owns the console market, it suggests they're doing good turnover. They're making, frankly, next to nothing out of them. I um, mean, obviously make a few bucks profit on each one, but despite all the, the Xboxes and Playstations are running on uh, AMD graphics, AMD CPUs, and sure, I mean, turnover development and all the rest of it is good, but considering uh, the suggestion was that PlayStation 5 development knackered uh, Vega graphics, bit of a shame, really. But nonetheless, AMD is currently doing by its standards well, compared to Intel, I mean, it's pitiful, but it's doing good stuff. And if Ryzen has uh, helped, and it clearly has, Epic at 7 nanometer, because that will be the second Epic, that should be when the data center people start shifting and actually buying because they never jump in early i mean they'd be crazy to as mission critical hardware uh but epic if epic at seven nanometer delivers as promised uh, and they start selling at 48 cores that will be you know money money for amd and god love them they need it so yep yeah, bring it on uh on the desktop amd rumored to move to 16 cores on the desktop using am4 
Wow. This apparently during 2019, well, it wouldn't be during 2018, which you have to think is third gen Ryzen using seven nanometer, uh, which is a follow on from what they're going to be doing with uh, follow on from Epic and, and such like. Uh, the fact that there's even any talk about this is impressive stuff. So that's a doubling up of the current four plus four cores equals eight cores, eight plus eight equals 16. So the logic is entirely in keeping with the current Ryzen 7 processors. Uh, naming and such like, you know, who knows, frankly, who cares. Uh, but the fact this is even even a thought is really encouraging. So Intel is about to launch eight core 16 thread and off in the distance and depending on when in 2019, maybe not too far off, uh, AMD moving the goalposts further. How many cores do you need in the desktop? How many cores are good for gaming? Very good questions. The answer is frankly not that many, but nonetheless, this is going to give games developers and other software uh, writers uh, huge scope uh, look at these cores look at the clock speeds this is this is really good news genuinely uh, happy about this um, and I must confess a bit of sh would it be schadenfreude yeah it would be schadenfreude is Apple MacBook Pro the new MacBook Pro appears to throttle hard um, Intel hardware that appears to be suffering from overheating but not overheating of the CPU, overheating of the VRMs. And apparently it's a software switch, which they've subsequently fixed. As the MacBook was delivered, uh, the processor would demand a certain amount of juice and the VRMs would attempt to supply that amount of juice. And they'd go, we can't do this. Hit 125 Celsius, basically shut off. CPU throttle back to some subterranean clock speed way below standard. Uh, and then the C uh, VRMs would cool down and the cycle would repeat. The thing being is, this was uh, Prime and such like would, would kick this off. Try and edit the video, i.e. have the cores running at correct speeds. We're not talking here some really unpleasant workload that's just Prime with AVX just to really muller the CPU. This is standard workloads. This just seems to be absolutely crazy. It suggests that Apple did not actually test this laptop before it went on sale, which if so is just like, what are they thinking? But the point here is that the fix is a software fix, which appears to be to limit the VRM. So when the, lim when the VRMs are required or requested to supply a certain amount of juice, they will instead supply less juice. In other words, the CPU will not get all the power it would like. So the CPU will not perform as well as it could were it getting the amount of juice that it wants. Why they've gone down this route is a complete mystery to me. Uh, MacBook Pro, Pro, why not make the chassis five to 10 mil thicker? Why not give it proper VRMs? Why not give it proper cooling? What's wrong with these people? I do not understand it. This is uh, genuine bafflement on my face and we're talking serious cash money. I mean, these laptops are what, two and a half and 3,000 pounds. They are expensive bits of kit. The idea that you can't take your MacBook Pro and edit videos without it throttling uh, and you can't get the maximum performance designed by Intel, utterly baffling to me just do not understand it but it does at a certain level make me smile wicked i know if you like this video thumbs up if you don't thumbs down if you want more from kick guru click to subscribe hit the bell button will tell you about new videos as they become available i'm leo water for kick guru this is leo says